गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स आई एम हियर अगेन फॉर माय कोर्स एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम्स इट गिव्स मी इमेंस प्लेजर टू बी हियर अगेन फॉर माय टॉपिक ए केस स्टडी ऑन कंट्रोल ऑगोमेंटेशन सिस्टम्स एंड फुल अथॉरिटी फ्लाई बाय वायर सिस्टम एज यू नो दैट दिस कोर्स is related to the aircraft systems and in aircraft systems we have different types of systems we can divide into four systems like airframe systems vehicle system avionic system and mission system controls are basically to make the aircraft fly as per the required condition if you see that there are 6 degree of freedom in that three are in the linear motion and three are in rotation motion in linear motion the aircraft can go forward aircraft can go sideways aircraft can also go upward or the downward so these are the x y z three axis if the motion is in this axis we can say that it is a linear motion and if aircraft starts rotating with respect to any of the axis or all of the axis then we will say that it is in the rotation so three linear motion and three rotary motions are there for the any aircraft we should also have the control of the aircraft and the primary controls of any aircraft are pitch control it is done by the elevator roll control it is done by the ailerons and the yaw control by the rudder these are the three primary control and in this i am going to discuss about how this controls are augmented the effectiveness of the control how we can ensure and there is a fly by wire mechanism nowadays this is electronic computerized system which makes the aircraft automated automatic flight of the aircraft can be achieved by this way so here i am discussing about the topics of the lecture and the co's mapping this topic belongs to the module 5 the flight control systems or engine control systems so its co's are co6 in this i am going to discuss about interloop stability and the control system which is also co6 stability augmentation system in short it is called sas this is also co6 control augmentation system so stability is different and the control is different that we have to understand that control and stability both are not the same then fly by wire fbw system and its advantages fly by wire structure architecture and then control loss they all are belongs to the co of the sixth number of the c now i will i will discuss about interloop stability and the control a small introduction i will give here this is taken from the reference 1 and 2 of which are mentioned in the last slide of this presentation so the dynamic stability characteristics of aircraft have been improved during the past 50 years using a variety of interloop feedback control system so this we can see that dynamic stability so if we talk about the dynamic stability if see it is a time and this is the amplitude of the motion and if you are disturbed from here to here and if it is going like this like this like this and after a finite time it is coming here and it is coming to equilibrium then it is a stable and this is called dynamic stable so the dynamic stability characteristics previously it was very bad condition but by the advent of some new equipments new systems in last 50 years a lot of improvement is experienced 
and this is by the inner loop feed uh, feedback control system inner loop simply refers to the fact that these systems are represented as the inner loop in a block diagram representation when married with outer loop autopilot mode such as attitude hold so it is the basically for the inner loop and inner loop it is a pitching then rolling and the yaw this we can see here these are the three things which comes under the inner loop system inner loop feedback control system has been grouped into three broad categories so this inner loop feedback control system has been grouped into the three broad categories they are stability augmentation system sas control augmentation system and fly by wire system and these all three i am going to discuss so here this is the one this is the our second and this is our third so these are the three inner loop systems so in this stability augmentation or control augmentation or fly by wire systems are to be considered now i will discuss about stability augmentation system and what is that system the stability augmentation system or sas where the first feedback control system designed intended to improve dynamic stability characteristics of an aircraft so these are the first thing and stability augmentation means you see if it is a pitching so what is the meaning of this stability augmentation so if it is a pitching and your aircraft is like this and flying in this direction all of a sudden some gust came from here it is a gust so this aircraft will tends to move nose will try to move in this direction whether this aircraft after you remove this gust whether this is again coming to its equilibrium or not if the tendency of this aircraft is to come back to its equilibrium position after the disturbance is removed we can say that it is a stable aircraft and this type of phenomena is called static stability and here i am talking about only the pitching so here to improve the dynamic stability we should have some absorber it should absorb the oscillation so it is also referred as a dampers stabilizers and stability augmentation so if you see here we have this horizontal stabilizer it is called horizontal stabilizers this is vertical stabilizer and here is the wing these wings are also acting as a lateral stabilizer wings are also and the wing sweep dihedral and different types of wing will give a different stability parameters or uh, different stability conditions aircraft such as f104 t37 t38 and f4 had stability augmentation system sas these are the old aircrafts there we used to have initially they have developed and they have used this sas system these systems generally feedback and aircraft motion parameters such as pitch rate to provide a controlled deflection that opposed the motion and increased damping characteristics so these systems generally feedback and aircraft motion parameter so most are how it is moving and they will give the feedback accordingly this ss system will work so mostly in this type of thing pitch rate the how per second how much it is going up or down nose is going up and the nose down it is called the pitch rate to provide a control deflection and accordingly the control means the pitching elevator is deflected so elevator has to be deflected as per the pitching rate and increased damping characteristics so that damping characteristics of the aircraft has to be increased 
as per the pitch rate of the aircraft. Now the SS had to be integrated with primary mechanical control system of the aircraft consisting of the stick, pushrod, cable and bell cranks leading to control surface or the hydraulic actuator that actuate the control surfaces. So how this SS had to be in integrated with the normal mechanical controls like push-pull rod, sticks, cables, bell crank and other things and this ha has to be connected with the activated by the actuators of the hydraulic system uh, and which will operate the uh, controls of the aircraft. The control authority percentage of full surface deflection available of SS was generally limited to about 10 percent. So only you see if this is your wing and this is your elevator. So this SAS will not do 100%. It is flying and only 10% of deflection will be undertaken in case of this uh, to make this thing stable. Not if it is flying at a 20 degree. So it can go up to 10 degree to plus 30 degree. These are the ranges. So up to maximum 10% of this thing will monitor. One problem with SAS was the fact that the feedback loop provided a command that opposed pilot control input. So one basic problem was experienced during this introduction of SAS. Fact that the feedback loop provided a command that opposed pilot control input. So this uh, will oppose the movement of the pilot. The stick which pilot is moving that has to be restricted. As a result, the aircraft became less responsive for a given stick input. So because it will oppose the stick movement of the pilot, so it has become a less responsive for a given stick input. So if we pilot is ma making 20 degree, there you will feel only 10 degree or the 15 degree or 16 degree. So that much deviation was experienced during SS introduction. This was typically addressed with the addition of a washout filter. So for this reason, a washout filter was used in the feedback loop that attenuated the feedback signal for a constant value of the aircraft motion parameter. So as per the motion parameter, it was deflected and this was done by the help of the washout filter in the feedback system. Another concern was the limited authority of SS. So first one was the main is the feedback loop opposed the pilot control input. So that was the first problem and this problem was handled by the washout filter. But another problem was the limited authority of SS actuator. Means this actuator was not full, fully controlled. That was necessitated by safety of flight requirement. So this was uh, very much necessary to handle the flight requirement of the aircraft. SS sensors and computers were normally non-redundant or dual redundant and thus did not approach the system reliability of the mechanical flight control system. So this SR sensors and the computers were normally non-redundant or dual redundant. So non-redundant means no safety. Safety was very less means there is no another system to take over in case of failure. So SS sensors and the computers were normally non-redundant or dual only or dual redundant only the one standby was there and thus did not approach the system reliability of the mechanical flight control system. So there was very less reliability of the aircraft especially the flight controls were very reliable very unreliable because there was no redundancy or if the redundancy is there is only one additional system is there and if that is also fail aircraft is going to be 
in problem. So th th these things has to be controlled and this has to be undertaken uh, uh, by the required system. Although SAS, SAS was effective in improving aircraft flying quality. So this is improved the flying quality of the aircraft, smoothness, flight, these things was achieved, but there are these two, three problems like limited authority of SAS, then redundancy, and the previous one is opposed pilot control input. So these three problems. So first problem is opposed pilot stick movement. It is restricted. Now second one is limited limited authority of SAS and third one is non-redundant. These are the three problems were existing but there was very good thing that the flying quality was improved. A good flying quality of aircraft can be achieved by this type of augmentation system. Here I am showing a simplified stability augmentation system. It is shown here. So here is the su control surfaces. Maybe you just see as an elevator. This is the elevator here. Here we have the control surface actuator. It may be hydraulic actuator or electrical actuators. Then we have SAS actuator. This is the stability augmentation system actuator. Here we have a small computer. It is called SAS computer. Aircraft motion sensor. All the motions, your velocity, your pitching rate, your uh, gyros, your artificial horizon. All these equipments are attached here. They will sense and they will give command uh, input to the computer. Computer will take this input and it will give some signals to the SAS actuator. This SAS actuator will give input to the control surfaces actuator and it will move either this side or this side as per the requirement of the system. There is a control stick. This control stick is operated by the pilot. It will push or pull like this. So it will move here and there and this rod will move this side. Accordingly here pressure will change, the actuator position will change and it will give the signal to the your control surfaces and the control surfaces either move in, in this direction or in this direction as per the requirement. So it, it is a minus and this is the plus. Okay, minus angle of attack and this is a plus angle of attack. So these actuators will move in such a way. This I have taken from the reference number three. Oh, okay. Now these SAS were used in many aircraft, old aircraft. So we can see here that this is the McDonnell Douglas F4, uh, one American aircraft. Then Northrop T38. These all are now not available for operation. Uh, but this system of SAS were used in these aircrafts. Okay. So next is the Cessna also T uh, thirty seven. It is used and the Lockheed F one not four. This is also used. Uh, this SAS were used by using this type of systems. The control of the aircraft is improved. Their stability and performance of the aircraft is improved. Was improved. So this was the reason that. In those 30, 40 years back, these aircrafts were equipped with this type of SS systems. Now, I have done the stability augmentation system. Now, I will discuss about control augmentation system. So, once I talk about the control, it means it is a control of the aircraft. Okay, so here we have to, 
the next step in the evolution of the aircraft feedback control system was control augmentation system it is called cas with the cas a pilot stick input is provided to the flight control system in a two ways so in this what happened the pilot has got some stick this is the stick and here you have seen the sas is here one computer is here and here is this some sensors are there this is the computer sas and this will go to the uh, one hydraulic actuator and from here it will go to the control so like this it was uh, there so in this with a cas a pilot stick input is provided to the flight control system in two ways so there in this case in control surfaces uh, control augmentation system we have the through the mechanical system here this is a mechanical system i have shown here a stick is there links there pulley is there bearings are here so and through the cs electrical path so one is a mechanical system another is the electrical system okay so these are the two systems by which the control augmentation of the aircraft has to be performed so the cs design eliminates the ss problem so we we have seen that there are three problems in ss i think you remember i have written here if you see here first problem was opposed pilot stick second problem was limited authority of ss and non redundant so these are the three problems and these three problems the cs design eliminates the ss problem so what are the ss problems three problems of pilot input being opposed by the feedback loop so this feedback loop which opposed by the pilot is eliminated in this cs system and this cs system was used some better and mod some modern aircraft in this aircraft it was not there this mcdonald douglas f4 northrop t38 lockheed 104 in this cas was not there means control augmentation system was not there in this only sas system was there but if you see this these aircrafts that is a7 f111 f14 f15 has have cas this cas systems are were there so these are the aircraft where your cas in this cas was present so uh, some problem of sas were tackled and these were avoided by using the cs system so in this a7 de course air f111 odd work medium tactical strategic bomber then we have grumman f14 mcdonald f15 so these are the few fighter aircrafts which were used in these aircraft cas were used for the handling of the aircraft now in this if you see what is the difference in the previous one this was there 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 this was not there in sas this system was not present okay so here you, you can see that here we have the control stick this control stick is operated by the pilot and this as and when pilot is moving this this control rod will go here cs actuator will also give some signal to the control surface actuator this will move motion will be in this direction so this will move in this direction and this either it will move in this or in this any one side of this thing will be done so this you can see that it is working but if you see here there is a little difference here there also computer it was called ss computer now this all things are now cs here we have the control input here 
We have the aircraft motion sensors. This feedback is also there. This feedback and this control input. A different items. This is different than SS system. So this we have to see that in a control augmentation system, when another control unit is fixed, this control unit will get the feedback from the control surfaces. This feedback will be given to the CS computer. Computer will modify the input signal. These signals will be given to the CS actuator. These actuators will give the signal to the control surface actuator. These control surfaces are electrically or hydraulically operated systems and they will give the motion of the rod accordingly the angle of attack of the control surfaces or the motion of the control surfaces will vary. So in CS we have little difference than the SS system only this unit that is the control unit is differing from the previous one. In this what happened this pilot is free to do. In the previous one the pilot was restricted your controls were not moving full as you required. So that may cause some problem during handling of the aircraft. That is why this CS system was developed. Now in this what happened additional reliability was designed into CS so that the control authority could be increased to approximately 50%. In the SS only 10% was there but here it is 50% increment of the control authority can be done. With the CS the aircraft dynamic response is typically well damped. So in the CS the dynamic response means the frequency and the uh, motion of the aircraft can be well damped and control response is scheduled with the control system gain to maintain a desirable characteristics through the flight and voila. CAS provided dramatic improvement in aircraft handling qualities. Both dynamic stability and the control response characteristics could be tailored and optimized to the mission of the aircraft. So, CS provided dramatic improvement in aircraft handling quality. So it is a tremendous amount of handling quality is much better. Both dynamic stability and the control response characteristics could be tailored. It can be monitored, it can be altered as per the requirement and optimized to the mission of the aircraft. So that is also one uh, great advantage of this system. Next I am going to talk about the fly-by-wire. So we have seen that SAS CS and the fly-by-wire. These are the under the inner loop system. So out of this three things we have discussed about two things and this is the third thing which is the fly-by-wire system and this is very recently in the last 20 to 30 years this fly-by-wire system was introduced and this has made a tremendous amount of improvement in aircraft performance and handling quality and the stability and the control of the aircraft has been tremendously improved. So based on the excellence handling qualities achieved with CES, we have seen that the CES was much better than SAS. The next logical step in feedback control system development was to remove the mechanical control system and provide the CES full authority. So we have seen that CES the mechanical system was involved. This pilot has to operate, the rod has to move, the wire has to move, the control linkages, bearing has to be moved. This causes a lot of problem for the aircraft controls. Sometimes the bearings may stuck due to some corrosion, some dust or some sand inside the bearing. You, you are operating or the ball bearing of the your bearings are damaged. So there is a lot of stiff or some cracks may develop or so, so many failures may happen. To avoid that thing, the third component they want to add is the fly-by-wire system in the CES so that the aircraft can be a CES full authority system. Such systems are known as a fly-by-wire and shortly it is called FBW systems. Okay, so the major advantage of using wire system is its reliability. So it has become more reliable. That is the first thing is uh, if you use this wire system, it is more reliable. It achieves the reliability by using triple and quad. So in this 
three or four times redundancy is there. If you use the FBW, in the previous cases it is one or twice, but here three to four times redundancy or the reliability of the aircraft is increased. It achieved the reliability by using triple or quad redundancy component along with self-testing software. So in this we can use the self-testing software. This software will automatically generate some signal and they will try to test the system and they will also try to rectify if it is possible. So that has made the fly-by-wire a very compact system. Aircraft such as the F-16, C-17 and F-22. These are the modern fighter aircrafts. These aircrafts are equipped with fly-by-wire. Okay, so F-16 also, F-22 is the one of the best aircraft, fighter aircraft in the world as of now. Have FBW. In the case of F-22, another term, fly-by-light was used. Now, fly-by-optics or fly-by-optics, uh, fly-by-light is sometimes used to indicate that Fiber optics links are used rather than wire. So in this, optics was used. Okay, so that is the benefit of this fiber optics. Now, fly-by-wire system. This we can see it is the same as I have shown you before in the CS. In this CS, what happened? It is not connected here. This you can see here, no link. This rod is not attached from here to here, it is removed. So there is no mechanical linkage from the pilot. Pilot has got here some electrical switches. This will operate this control input. From here the signal will go to the computer. From here this sensors will queue to this and this will operate. This is not connected here, it is free. So no wire, no links, no pulleys, no bell cranks, no bearings, nothing is there, no mechanical part. Only pilot has to use a small switch, left, right, nose up, nose down, pedal also, everything is operated by the electrical system, not by any mechanical systems are not used. This type of system is called the fly-by-wire system and this has a lot of advantages for the aircraft and modern aircrafts, especially F-22 and uh, F-17, they are equipped with fly-by-wire and the F-22 is now fly-by-optics is used. In place of wire, they are using the optical fiber and these optical fibers are very much useful for the aircraft operation. So now I will talk about your full authority fly-by-wire. So I have given a glance, what is the fly-by-wire? Means it is not connected with mechanical system the, your all controls, the flight controls, aileron, rudder, elevators, flap rounds, your engine controls, everything is electrically operated. So, full authority provided by the FBW allows very significant tailoring of stability and the control characteristics. So, this, if it is a full authority, the stability of the aircraft and the control of the aircraft is fully monitored, fully altered. As per the requirement, I 100% efficiency it is providing. This ability has led to fly-by-wire system with several feedback parameters and way, weighting for of feedback gains based on flight condition and other parameters. So, full authority if you want to make, we need a, a lot of feedbacks for every type of system we need a sensors and that sensor has to give some signals to the computer accordingly your computer will weigh whether this is okay or not if it is okay there are so many logarithms those logarithms will uh, analyze this thing in a fraction of seconds or in milliseconds and they will give feedback they will give to the control sur surfaces and these parameters will give different flight conditions 
So in this, the block diagram of FW systems can become complex because of the number of feedback sensors are involved. So here it is, it becomes very, very complex and it is, so number of systems are more, so your diagram will vary, become, it, it will become quite complex. Here we have seen the full authority FVW, this you can see here, new few important military aircraft with full authority FDW. So here Fighting Falcon F-16, C-17 Globemasters and Lockheed Martin F-22A. This is yeah, just now I told they are the flyby. They use full authority. This aircraft uses flyby optics. High flyby light, it is called. In this, optical fibers are used. Optical fibers are used in place of metal wire. So that is the difference we have in this type of aircraft. I think we have this Globe Master is with us now in India. We have Indian Air Force has got Boeing uh, C-17 Globe Masters and it it was very much useful for our transport operations, for military operations, for adding different types of goods and services. Now we have the typical loop systems. So here some of the typical inner loop and the outer loop. So some of the typical inner loop systems are yaw damper, pitch damper, roll damper. Means three main control dampers. Then angle of attack feedback and load factor feedback. The load factor is N, angle of attack is alpha. And this, they are the yaw damper, pitch damper and the roll damper. Angle of attack feedback and the load factor feedback. And what is the load factor? It is the ratio of lift versus the total weight of the aircraft. So this has to be measured, the, this has to be sensed by the sensors and these are fitted in inner loop system of the flyby wire. But some of the outer loop systems are here, pitch attitude hold. All holds are there. Pitching hold means a particular pitch, it has to be hold. Your aircraft should fly in that condition. Then altitude hold, the height of the aircraft has to be hold, bank angle has to be hold and the heading to be hold. So if you see here that so if your aircraft is moving pitching like this it should hold then it the height from here, here on the ground the, this is the altitude if you fix this thing at 9000 feet aircraft will maintain 9000 feet if you want to bank the some five bank angle is five degree aircraft will continue in the bank if you are switching to the bank angle hold and this will a, a secondary step this is called outer loop and heading hold if you want to nose a certain angle it is called the gamma this gamma angle it will maintain same angle as per the requirement so these are the two loop system, inner loop. Inner loop contains yaw damper, pitch damper and the roll damper, angle of attack feedback and the load factor feedback. These are the five items which are part of the inner loop. But once we talk about the outer loop, outer loop is in the secondary. It will maintain the pitch. As you give the pitch, it will maintain the pitch. It will also maintain the height, how much height you want. Accordingly, it will maintain the height, bank angle. If you make some angle and it will maintain the same angle like this. Then heading angle, if uh, uh, aircraft is straight and if you want to make two degree, it will maintain two degree and it will move. So like this, typical loop systems are divided in two main features. Now what are the advantages of the flyby wire system?
on the aircraft. It is very, very important that we have to understand each and every point here. I have mentioned one, two, three, four, five, and six points. I will discuss each and every one here itself. So, <clears throat> weight saving. So, main thing is weight saving. So, how the your FBW save the weight? Just now I told you that in fly-by wire system, we don't use the mechanical linkages. You know that from pilot, if you take a Boeing or Airbus, pilot is here at the and your aircraft is here, your horizontal tail, your uh, wing is here. You see, from here, so many links will come like this to operate the this, oh, this is the elevator and here is the rudder so another system from here rudder will come another link will come and it will and for the elidons for flaps for everything uh, different things will come here okay so a huge amount of weight is saved tons of weight can be saved by using a small flyby wire system. So that is the weight saving. And once you save the weight, your aircraft performance, your engine power, your weight of the engine will also reduce. Your size of the engine will also reduce. And so many things can happen if you use the flyby wire system. Second very important thing is the reduced maintenance. Okay. So how your aircraft can reduce the maintenance? You know, just now I have told you that there are number of links, there are number of pulleys, there are number of uh, connecting rods, bearings, hundreds, thousands of bearings are used between this. So due to the wear and tear of this bearing, due to wear and tear of these wires which are connecting from control links, slowly, slowly it is rubbing and this may get damaged. Your bearings may get damaged. So if you uh, remove these all parts, all these things will be reduced, the flight safety will increase, the aircraft availability will also increase and the maintenance cost flight will be available for the more time and hence the reduced maintenance will give lot of benefits for the aircraft. So that is why we uh, use for flight by for the FBW fly by wire system this is the reduced maintenance in this way it is reducing gust load elevation another thing is there as the wind is moving it will sense that aircraft is experiencing the more gust aircraft will change its attitude and it will uh, gust load will be reduced as a pilot you are inside you cannot see that from which side the wind is coming and what is the speed? But your sensors are there. These sensors will sense accordingly. They will give signal to the your systems control, and this control will move, move in such a way that your aircraft will change its attitude or change its direction. So it is the gust load of the aircraft can be reduced. So I have done this, this, and this. Automatic maneuvering protection. This will also protect during automatic maneuvering. If you want to maneuver or pitch up, roll, turn and all, if you want to do, your control system will protect. It will not go beyond the limit because as a human, if you are operating the aircraft, you may not be able to sense where the danger is there. Your aircraft may go beyond its limit. But if you are flying by the fly-by-wire, this will ensure that your aircraft will never exceed its limit or always it will fly within the limit and every load factors are all the emergency systems are safe so that it will be protected from different maneuvering. Improved handling. Aircraft landing and takeoff, aircraft flying, if your aircraft is flying there is a turbulence in the atmosphere your aircraft will automatically change its attitude, your its uh, uh, conditions and it, your uh, uh, aircraft will be very smooth flying. The passengers or the pilot will not feel any discomfort in handling. Fuel saving as you, you know the weight is reduced, the size of engine is reduced, the thrust also is reduced. So a 
fuel saving will be there and if you save the fuel uh, the cost of flight or the cost of the per passenger flight the tickets will be also reduced so more passenger will come and the airline will also get a sufficient amount of benefit by using the fly by wire system now i will discuss here about the fly by wire architecture and if you see here that this uh, i am taking here a reference these are the i have left here so here we have some architecture of the fly by wire system here we have elec elevator aileron computer elevator aileron elevator and aileron computer then we have sec spoiler elevator computer then we have the flight augmentation computer here we are using elevator aileron trimable horizontal stabilizer these three things are operated by this elec elevator aileron computer okay so this we have to see that elec means aileron elevator aileron computer it is two numbers then sec spoiler elevator computer they are the three number and the flight augmentation computer are the two so total seven computers are used seven uh, computers are used so elec is used for elevator aileron and trimable horizontal stabilizer these are used for spoiler elevator and computer and they are using spoilers elevators trimable horizontal stabilizers flight control augmentation is for the yaw damping the rudder travel limit and the rudder trim so this mostly used for the rudder and these two are used for elevator this is for elevator and aileron and this is for spoiler and elevator so like this we have the architecture of the fbw here we have to see some about the control laws so so this we have to see here that how control laws are working and pitch control i i, I am just shown here elevator here so this you can see here that here is a autopilot command and here the side stick command by the pilot it is a mechanical command and the autopilot command it goes to elac what is elac just now i have told you that is elevator and aileron computer elevator and aileron computer and this also goes for here and this is the spoiler and elevator computer so what is sec spoiler and elevator computer elec elac elevator aileron computer so this signals goes from here to elac then it goes to sec from here it goes to auto trim it goes to the normal then here goes to electrical motor these motors are operated here is actuators are here here mechanical trim is also there from here this you can do and this goes to the tail plane in tail plane if the tail plane is movable they will move the tail plane and also it will go to the elevator from here the feedback this is the feedback feedback will go here again it will go to lac and here is alternate control anything this you can edit so like this control laws are working and different it is for the elevator means pitching okay now it can be seen that the elec elevator aileron control computers control the aircraft in pitch in the so called normal control law 
so pitching is in the normal control law and that they do so by sending command to the left and the right hand elevator and also by sending a longer term trim command to the trimmable horizontal stabilizer so if you can see here this is the trimmable horizontal stabilizer so this horizontal stabilizer can move it will also go to the left and the right elevator so in this way it is working in the event that the elec are unserviceable if this elec this is unserviceable then what will happen are unserviceable or unavailable due to failure in their supplies two of the three secs number 1 and number 2 will take over their role to control the aircraft in pitch the so called alternate control law so if you see here if this elec is unserviceable or not working sec will work and this sec will give here normal operation and it will work normally as and this is called alternate control law so first one is the normal control law where elac will work if elac is not working sec work and this is called the alternate control law under alternate control the aircraft should handle almost exactly as in the normal control but many of the envelope protection features are unavailable it will work likely but some protection features will not be available take the caution and fly and you can come down as and when it is required this includes the high angle of attack protection and the pitch attitude protection which form a part of normal control law so this protection has to be taken care which are not there in normal control laws a further degradation requiring for example the loss of all three inertial reference systems would cause the selection of the pitch direct law in which moment of the side stick controller in pitch is translated directly into the moment of the elevator control surfaces so this you can see here that pitch control the redundancy it is shown here here is the normal control law controlled by the elac alternate control law controlled by sec direct control law it is the third one stick to elevator direct control stick to elevator it is direct control and then mechanical link to pitch trim this pitch trim will work directly this you can see here pitch trim it is a mechanical so here we have the four times redundancy okay so if we have if we are using this first redundancy second third and fourth four redundancies are four pitch control redundancy means four things are available to operate the pitch control system of the aircraft now if i talk about the yaw control so yaw control is achieved through signaling from the fac to the rudder actuator through the fac themselves receives their input signals from the elec and the autopilot a mechanical collection connection is retained between the rudder pedal and the rudder actuator to allow for control of the aircraft in roll through the secondary effect of yaw in the event of a complete failure of the efcs or the electrical supply total mechanical backup is thus available through the use of the pitch trim wheel and the rudder so in this fac is used this fac will queue to this rudder rudder will operate and this will also help with the elec system which is used for the pitching control and the autopilot so in this way it is working now roll control of the fly by wire and how it is working the control laws requires for the control in roll are much less complex than those used in the pitching plane at least in concept so for roll it is much easier as in pitching it, it is somewhat difficult a conventional aircraft is required to exhibit a degree of lateral stability whereby if bank is applied and the controls are subsequently released 
then the aircraft will slowly return to its wing level. So stability is very much lateral stability is very much required. Otherwise, if the controls are not operated, aircraft should come down to its equilibrium position. The principal reason for this requirement is to ensure that the reverse does not happen. So if you are banking left or right and you are not using the aileron, it should again come down to its equilibrium position. So that is the objective and here this you can see in this diagram, these are the wings, these are the wing, these are the ailerons left and the right. Here is autopilot command, it goes to ELAC, then side stick command, it will go to SEC, LAF into two and it will go to this spoilers, one go to spoilers, another go to, to the ailerons. So that is why it is called SEC. Okay, so spoiler and aileron controls systems. Now, as a result, it is normal for the pilot to have to hold a small amount of aileron towards the direction of turn in order to maintain a bank angle with an FBW aircraft where it can be demonstrated that the control system will not allow the bank angle to increase uncommanded. The requirement for the positive lateral stability can be relaxed and control system can be designed which will allow a selected bank angle to be maintained without the pilots having to keep some control deflection applied. These are the references which I have already quoted that is EHJ pilot automatic flight control fourth edition Blackwell Science Limited a Blackwell publishing company UK, Moir I and the Seabridge A design and development of aircraft systems and introduction AIA education series. Then I have taken some slides, some material from avionic PPT, stability and augmentation system. Any questions you are welcome to ask. I also request to subscribe and like my channel. Any questions you are welcome to ask. This is my email ID. This is my email ID. You are welcome to ask the questions. Thank you very much for the joining. Be tuned for my next lecture. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.